today it's Friday. I love Friday. I think Friday is a magnificent thing. One of the things I love about Friday is that I get to go hiking and that's super fun. So I go hiking on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays and I take the dogs and I wear them out so that on Mondays and Fridays when I'm doing some Facebook liveness, the dogs aren't barking and running around like crazy idiots. So there it is. Um, it makes me really happy. Dogs chill, sleeping, although they were being obnoxious and that's why I was a minute late getting on the Facebook, but whatever. Anyway, hey, how's it going? Super happy to be here today. I changed the view again from the background because I'm trying to see like what my jam is. You know, like what's my jam? What's working for me? What's not? Anyway, I thought it would be nice to, while I was doing this, to look at my PhD behind me because it makes me happy. And also the suffrage movement. So I've got the, the Seneca Falls Convention behind me too, which is awesome. So anyway, and birds. Who doesn't need a bird? I mean, there's a reason there's a whole Portlandia issue or episode on birds. Put a bird on it. That's what I say. Um, speaking of the word, of the bird, here we go. So here is a little bit of what I want to talk about today. The first thing I want to talk about today is that it just came up on my Twitter feed <laughs> that Jeff Sessions <laughs> says that the way we are going to solve the opioid crisis in America is to make people take aspirin for pain. I'm just going to let that sink into all y'all for just a minute. The way we're solving the opioid crisis in America is to give people aspirin for their pain, which I gotta say, like, you know, way to take it back. I mean, really, let's, let's get old school, Jeff Sessions. I don't think that's the problem. I think the problem is we are addicted and Medicaid and medicated, and we have all of these things and emotions we're trying to stuff down. And so we do that through medication and addiction. So anyway, I just wanted to bring it to your attention that Jeff Sessions says that aspirin instead of opioids is going to solve the entire opioid crisis in America, which by the way, killed like 68,000 people last year. Um, I think I saw on Twitter. So I'm pretty sure we might have a problem with the opioids. So there's that. And then the second thing that came to my attention before I went live today was uh, Cecile Richards rocks. Cecile Richards, um, she posted a tweet that was a screenshot of the television. I think it was CNN. And the, the line at the bottom of the screen said, and I'm quoting the line on the bottom of the screen. It's really good. Trump defends ex-aid expresses no sympathy for women. And Cecile's comment was, this is America. Like, this is the perfect headline to describe the Trump administration. And I thought, yeah, that's why I'm actually uttering the name, because I usually don't say his name. But I love that, that, that we're talking about Rob Porter, who has uh, beaten not one, but two of his wives, and um, has resigned. And Trump is defending him. Trump defends ex-aid, expresses no sympathy for women. Could this America be any more true? And my favorite other piece to the Twitters today was that apparently some Breitbart news agency is saying that witches are putting spells on Donald Trump that is making it so that he has a cursed administration. And to all the witches, I would like to say, here, here, we're finally exposed. And what's nice about that is that we can just be out in the limelight, hexing and vexing the entire Trump administration. <laughs> Good job, ladies. Way to go. What in the hell is that? Which we're, we're, we're really literally reporting in the news in 2018 that witches are hexing and vexing the presidential administration. Does anybody else like find that completely ridiculous? Because I find that to be completely ridiculous. I, um, although if that's what's happening, Good job, but I just, um, it just boggles the mind, truly. Another nice news item I'd like to bring up on Fuck Shit Up Friday is the fact that women in prison, um, so we've got the witches, and then we've got the women in prison who, in Arizona, who are only given 12, uh, like 12 pads, no tampons, 12 pads for an entire year, and if they bleed through their pads, 
they um, get a violation, um, like if they get blood on their um, their clothes, their um, prison clothes, they get a violation um, and they are not allowed to go to the commissary to buy new pads. So this story out of Arizona is really fascinating because I think it speaks to how we treat women in prison and um, the human rights violations that women experience in prison. I have done some research on shackling and how women are shackled during active childbirth. So they're literally kept in restraints while they're giving birth. Um, but also, and that's very common practice in most of the states in America, but also this idea that women who uh, are on their period should not be given um, sanitary napkins in order to uh, be able to have a healthy period. And um, so that's a problem. So that's happening in Arizona. So that just came out. So I'm going to explore that a little bit more and I'll put links to all these stories in the, in the comments. And then, or on my blog. And then I got this in the mail yesterday and it's from the lovely Guttmacher Institute, which I love. Guttmacher does really kick-ass research on uh, women's reproductive health in the nation and also throughout the country. I mean, throughout the country and throughout the world. Sorry, I misspoke there. <laughs> so anyway, I got this really cool little flyer in the Guttmacher.org uh, and the message is this. 58% of women live in a state hostile to abortion rights. Um, and um, that's going to get worse probably in 2018. And also um, 29 states were hostile or extremely hostile to abortion rights, which is more than double that 17 years ago. So in 17 years, we have gone, we've swung the pendulum to a space where um, people are really getting hostile towards abortion. And even though it's the law of the land, it's still causing a problem. And there was a really great um, story done on uh, Rewire News, rewire.news, um, about, um, or rewirenews.org. I can't remember what it is. Anyway, don't trust me on that one. But they did a story um, called Marching Towards Gilead about the attack on women's reproductive health and um, access, like literally accessing clinics and having to get through people and all of the restrictions. And so there was a really good podcast done by Imani Gandhi and Jessica, um, I only, I know where his head to mommy, um, Jess Piccolo uh, about um, this issue. They have this really great podcast called um, Boom Lawyered. And so they do this really great podcast called Boom Lawyered, which you should totally listen to. It's amazing because it explains all the, the speech issues and the issues with reproductive justice. But they did a really good story about that um, last uh, November, I think. So anyway, that's also something that we should remember is that all of these states are really hostile towards women. So there it is. Um, and that's like 58% of the population. And then the last thing I want to talk about is I want to tell you a little story about Dr. Melissa Bird, PhD. So there are two things, there are two things that I just really want you to know about me. And they're like secrets. They're like these things that I don't normally talk about publicly, but I've decided today that I'm going to have this conversation. So the first thing that you should know about me is that um, I used to be terrified to do a speech in public. So when I was in high school and I had to take speech, I would literally throw up before I had to. And um, it was really awful and I hated it. And mind you, I went to this really small high school and I knew all 20 people in my speech class, but I still was terrified to talk to other people. Like terrified. Like I would throw up and I would shake and it was horrible. And I hated it. Like I couldn't stand it. And then, as a young adult in my um, mid twenties, I, they were passing this um, amendment. Um, hey Jim, how's it going? Uh, they were passing this um, amendment, this anti LGBT, uh, oh, it was the marriage amendment. So it was like a 2003 legislative session leading to the 2004 marriage amendment being on the ballot. And, um, or something like that, 2004, 2003, 2004. But anyway, they were doing this big rally up at the Capitol and someone somehow said, Missy Bird should give a speech and talk about and talk about it. And I was like, no, I'm not giving a speech. I'm terrified to talk to people. Like that scares the crap out of me. 
And um, so this was um, almost 20 years ago. So, so there I am, and I'm this youngin, almost 20 years ago, not that long, 2004. When was that? 13 years ago. Okay, huh? I can do math. Um, so, so I got asked to do this speech at the Capitol, and I, I was terrified. I was so afraid that I was going to bubble my words, and so I typed it all out. And I put on pearls, which was ridiculous. I was so formally dressed. I was wearing like a suit and pearls and it was silly. Um, and I the, I remember getting up in, in the rotunda of the Capitol and I was holding this piece of paper and I was terrified. Like I was shaking and I'm shaking the paper like this. And I'm like, ooh. And so um, I was very, very nervous. And I got to the speech and nobody laughed at me. Um, although nobody laughed when I thought they would laugh because I threw in some funny things because I'm funny. And so... Um, but that was like my first public speech and it was a rally and there was like 300 people there and I was like, whoa, I made it through. I didn't throw up before. I was super nervous, but I didn't lock my knees and I didn't faint. Nobody thought I sounded bad. And in fact, I got a, I think I got a news inter, an interview with the newspaper out of it or something. But so all of this is to say that just because you're afraid of doing something doesn't mean you shouldn't do it because likely if you do do it and it turns out okay and nobody dies as a result of your speaking or your writing or your badass uh engagement in social justice advocacy it's going to be okay and so i say this i tell you this story because i think sometimes and i hear this from my students and i hear this from my clients and i hear this from my friends they're like oh missy you're not afraid to speak in public like you get up and you talk and you you're always just so confident and you just get up there and you give these great speeches and i'm like no actually i'm terrified and, and I have to type out, like, I still type out my speeches. I'm going to be a terrible TED talker someday when I finally get on TED, because I like having my speech in front of me. Um, so I'm going to have to work on that. Uh, but I um, type it out in like 16 point font and put it in plastic sleeves. And if any of you saw my speech that I gave at the Women's March a couple weeks ago, you'll notice I'm holding paper because I have to see it and I have to have it there because I think it makes me feel better. So anyway, all that is to say, do something that scares the crap out of you. Like if you're scared to do something, go ahead and do it. It's okay. Whether it's public speaking, writing, or starting a revolution, or um, being one of the witches that's putting a hex on the Trump administration, like whatever you want to do, just go ahead and do it. It's good. It's going to be okay. And I told you I had two secrets. And the second secret is I am addicted to Candy Crush Saga. And when I'm procrastinating or I'm trying not to do something, that is what I do. And I just needed to come clean about that because I think publicly people should admit uh, what their secrets are when it comes to procrastination. And that is my number one way to procrastinate. That's how I become the queen of my procrastination nation is I play, um, I play uh, Candy Crush Saga. So there it is. So I have a really good friend. Her name is Jen Selig. And Jen Selig asked me, I post these pictures where I'm like, hey, this is my message for today. And I have these cards and they are, um, she asked me about this. So I'm going to give you a demonstration. So this is my truth bomb deck with Danielle Laporte. She is a badass. So if you don't have a truth bomb deck, get one like today. You could order it for like 20 bucks online or whatever it is. Really, really awesome. So every day I wake up in the morning and I pull out all my cards and I hold them in my hands like this, and I just move them back and forth like this. And the whole time I'm thinking, what is the message I need to hear today? Like, what do you want me to know? It, it doesn't matter if it's the divine goddess, or if it's God, or if it's the universe, like whatever you're, you're searching for, just be like, you know, what do I need to know today? And, and what, is the, what are you sending me? And what, are the, what do I need to focus on? And what's going to help me expand um, to bring me the greatest joy, happiness, and, and um, abundance. So I just ask these questions and I move them around like this. And then I break them into three even piles and I go left to right. So I go put one here. I'm going to knock it over. So I put one on the left, one in the middle, and then one to the side on the right. So it looks like that. See that? So it looks like that. And then Jennifer Selig, here you go. I just pull one card from each deck and then I look at it. 
I look at the cards. Are you ready? Are we ready to see what message Missy Bird needs today? Hold the excuses. Oh, so good. You're free to go. Ooh, wonder where I'm going. Meditate before you medicate. Wow, I just totally talked about self-medication earlier in the program. That's really amazing. So anyway, those are your three messages, my three messages for today. But if that's an intentional practice you want to get into, I highly recommend it. You can use it with any card deck you like that calls to you and inspires you. I have a couple, but I'm really into the Danielle Laporte truth bombs right now because they're bringing me joy and happiness. So anyway, thank you so much for being a part of Fuck Shit Up Friday today. Um, the way we're going to fuck shit up is we're going to do something that scares us. And I don't know what that looks like for you, but that's what it looks like for me. Um, we're going to um, call Jeff Sessions to task for saying that aspirin instead of opioids will solve the opioid crisis. Um, we're going to keep hexing and vexing the Trump administration because apparently witches are all about hexing and vexing the administration. We're going to throw a fit about women not getting menstrual pads or menstrual supplies while they're in prison in Arizona. And finally, we're going to remember that Rob Porter really is an asshole. And so is the administration for defending him. Have a super good weekend, y'all. Fuck some shit up. I'll see you on Monday.